Welcome back. It's another Wage Rage. That's Miguel Iterati. I'm Anthony Scott Pyatt. Hey, it's going to be a good week of boxing after a couple of down weeks a little bit. Uh, we had to skip our eight-leg parlay. There just wasn't enough available last week. But this week, T of Fima Lopez and Josh Taylor square up. We've got Sonny Edwards versus Ocampo. And Miguel, you're going to bring us um, MMA, I think specifically UFC. What fights do you have lined up there to talk about today as well? We're going to be at the UFC 289 event up in Canada, June 10th, Saturday. And uh, we're looking at Oliveira versus Yariush in the lightweight division, a uh, match that will likely determine the next title fight uh, for the champion Makachev. And then the main event, which sees Amanda Nunez, the female GOAT, facing Irene Aldana in uh, her latest uh, title defense. Really a pretty good night of fights on that one. We'll get right back to that after we talk about really just a couple of uh, boxing matches. I will say next week also has Ellie Scottney, and that's always a fun one. Uh, let's get right to the main event, though. Josh Taylor, Teofima Lopez... They're not calling it this, but I see this as sort of a redemption matchup. Meaning, Josh Taylor was, by most observers, squarely beaten by Jack Catterall. Uh, but uh, Taylor did get the decision on that. Pretty sketchy. Uh, Tiafima Lopez has had his ups and downs. Uh, there's a bit of turmoil there. Uh, of course, a hot mic caught him after the last fight, which he won, I believe. It very close, maybe a split decision, saying uh, to his corner, hey, do I still have it? Am I, am I still good? You know, so Lopez has got some questions he needs to answer. Uh, he was also just hit with divorce papers for what it's worth. I mean, look, I'm not trying to make this a uh, Kardashian-type show or anything, um, but anybody who's been through something like that, it's going to affect your mentality. It's going to affect your training and whatnot. So as a betting man... We have to take into consideration people's personal lives as well. It just is what it is. This divorce is not going to help Tiafima Lopez. Uh, Josh Taylor's a minus 174. Tiafima Lopez a plus 136. As we are here about a week away from the fight. We'll keep an eye on this one. I mean, I really feel like to an extent, if one guy comes out and looks good and the other guy doesn't look good, uh, because these are both controversial guys with 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 questions to be answered, uh, you know, it could relaunch the career of one of them and sink the career of the other. If they both look really good and it's tough to call a winner, then then maybe things are up in the air. And if, uh, but I really feel if one of these guys, uh, you know, can can dominate, can really have a good showing, then we're, that's going to launch them to to whatever's next. Um, but, let me let me ask you though, Miguel. I know you've uh, understood Teofimo Lopez's skills and abilities for a long time. For years, we've talked about this guy. You and I, uh, Josh Taylor, of course, undisputed as well. Um, interesting matchup here. What I mean, do you, do you do you see what I'm saying about this redemption side with both of them having issues that they really need to almost relaunch? their career if they're trying to get to that superstar level. Well, um, let me stop rambling and get you in on this as a Teofima Lopez uh, aficionado almost. I mean, you're somebody that's really understood him in the past. For sure. I, you know, you look at Teofimo's story, he was, uh, you know, on the Olympic program, um, you know, basically trained stateside this whole time, which, you know, means that you're going to receive pretty much the highest level training you're going to be able to possibly receive. And then, uh, you know, the shuffle and the, you know, shake and bake in the amateurs led him to make the Olympics for Honduras, his original home. Uh, so he was able to showcase his talents at the Olympics and then became part of, you know, the, if you look at that year, Shakur Stevenson, et cetera, et cetera, Katie Taylor, the Olympics were loaded with talent, Clarissa Shields, you know, yeah, right. with people that they were going to, Look yeah. at at the ranks and T. I think Fimo. Lauren Price and uh, Karis Arton stall as well. I mean, what it was it was a hell of a, a banner year for the Olympics that year. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get the Brazilian kid's name wrong, but uh, 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 
top rank signed a bunch of Olympians. Uh, there was an Irish kid as well uh, that got robbed by the judges in the Olympics, and there were pictures of Bob Arum and him, you know, giving the judges the finger together. You know, so <laughs> uh, it was a big Olympic <laughs> showcase. And to Teofimo's credit, he came out of the pack. Mm -hmm. Chris Stevenson has separated himself as well, but it was Teofimo actually who came out of that pack. And um, let's not, you know, when he beat Lomachenko is the key because he was the first guy. Lomachenko still hasn't got, you know, he, he just recently took um, the loss to Haney, but he was sort of on his way back to, you know, trying to get his build his way back up. Mm -hmm. Teofimo maybe doesn't get enough credit. If you rate Lomachenko as the all-time great or whatever, then you've got to give Teofimo credit because Teofimo hunted him down. He'd been calling yep. him out for several fights, looking out for him. And when you do that sort of thing and you're studying an opponent like that, oftentimes mm -hmm. you can catch a guy maybe the way he caught Lomachenko. You know? Yeah, that was a great fight. Uh, it, there's so many questions yet unanswered. I wish sometimes boxing were... Moving faster as far as getting fights made in the modern era because there's so many questions that could be answered if this guy fought that guy fought this guy fought that guy. Uh, Lopez losing to George Cambosis shortly after. Now, here's the thing with that, though. Uh, I don't out of hand discredit Lopez uh, and his doctors with the diagnosis of that lung issue that was, as they said, life-threatening. Uh, you know, in, in 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 this game, at the elite level, if you're off five or ten percent, that that means you're going to lose. I mean, that's just how well, it is. Point five or point one percent, you're going to lose. Right, right. You're, 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 that's one of the things that you, you've been spot on since the beginning. Here is that you, what we're wearing here is the amount of baggage each guy is going into the ring with before. It's this mm -hmm. is not a pure fight where we're just going to have everybody. On cruise control, we're going to see who the best fighter is. These guys have excess questions that, that they've left unanswered that they got to answer. That's right. So that's why this fight is so interesting to me. It really is. Because uh, both these guys have very much impressed me at times and very much disappointed me at times. Um, and so it really depends on which guy shows up. So, folks, I can tell you, we're going to be paying attention to any video that we can see. If we've got any folks on hand that can report, we want to see the weigh-ins. We want to see the open trainings. This one is really up in the air for me. And um, and as I say, the divorce with, with Tia Fimo, it has to play in. It has to factor in. Um, so it's going to be a fun fight. It's going to be a fun fight to watch. And it, and it hopefully answers some questions. Because one of these guys is moving up. In, in their in their sort of ranking and the other one is probably going to be looked at as as damaged goods yeah no i agree you know taylor like you said comes off a, a, a fight that you know people make the argument he lost and you know and we've talked about this on this on you know since we've relaunched the podcast and i think it'll be a theme that's recurring in some cases the general high level of competition among the British guys, so even if Catterall's not a, a world championship level guy, they keep a, enough of a high level there among their top guys. There's enough pride and enough angst and some of that fight that that fight may have been some type of grudge match or something like that. And if that's the case, I can almost forgive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know the judges going one way or another and stuff like that. I don't want, I you know, I don't know anything yet, either way on that. It looks like what it looks like, and that's what gives him that redemption need, like you're saying. But there could be, you know, some reasons for that. You know, they know they know each other, whatever their relationship is. Maybe Taylor, eh, you know, maybe Taylor kind of likes Catterall. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a shame we got to fight. Hey, what's your what was the attitude going in? I'm not 100 percent sure of that. I'm sure. You can find it, you can know it. But I, I would excuse some of those internecine battles in, in England because that the level they keep is tough. We talked about it with, you know, we recently, we saw Canelo face John Ryder and we, we saw that exact thing with, let's not discredit the competition Ryder's come up here and some of the guys he's lost to, you know, Billy Joe Saunders. Right. You know, and then he goes guys, the distance. Yeah. They weren't guys that, that 
that you you can't discount some of those battles in England because they come with a lot of cash, like with a lot of credit. You know, if if Taylor's trending up and Catterall's already taking a few black eyes, maybe Catterall saw that as his big chance and came mm -hmm. in with everything he's got. So yep. there's a lot to analyze as to why Taylor's there. I think that with everything you've mentioned from, you know, the lung problem to the wife problem to everything like this, to Teofimo questioning himself before the other fight, maybe that questioning came at the right time. Yep. Maybe, you know, maybe he was able to right or wrong here. Uh, they're going to fight Madison Square Garden. So I think maybe that for Taylor, you know, if you wanted to say, oh, the British judges were biased for him or, you know, the judges over there, Carroll is a British opponent, but he had things working his way. He won't have that home cooking in New York is, is the expectation, right? So, um, so Teofimo won't have that, you know, complaint, I don't think. So now it just comes down to who's carrying less baggage. If Taylor, yeah. all he's got to do is, is explain away one average performance against a guy in Britain who most people on a world level will underrate. He's got a higher upside almost, really. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. got a much easier job to come to the ring motivated than, right. than Teofimo Lopez does. Absolutely. He carry so much other baggage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I guess we'll move on to... Whoa, Sonny who Edwards. You, who are you picking? Who are you picking? How are you doing? Oh, I thought I thought I'm supposed to pick on a uh, Pyatt picks on oh, Thursday. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I was looking forward to your pick though. <laughs> <laughs> we we're gonna save. Work. It's okay. We're, we're okay. gonna save it. We're gonna save it. Uh, like, no, honestly, I mean, you're asking. I can give you the non-answer answer, the the political answer, but 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 not because I'm trying to be evasive, because it's actually true this time. I really do need to see some more. I need to talk to some folks. I need to see, maybe That's even wait till the weigh-in. I mean, yeah. there's just, there's too many questions left unanswered with both these guys, but I do think Taylor is more level. Yeah, he had a not great fight, but I, I don't feel the turmoil from him that I feel with, with Tiafimo, you know? Uh yeah. So I need to see just how crazy the people around Tio or how crazy he's being, how crazy, you know, I mean, there's just, how it's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. <laughs> it really is. I want to see some more. This is why I asked that, that question, which is, you know, maybe Lo, you know, we'll find out if Lopez had that realization, am I good anymore at the right time? And you know, right. how fast is this process of ups and downs? Because like I, he he's a guy that beat Lomachenko and mm -hmm. beat Lomachenko first you know the Salido loss early in Lomachenko's career we can put an asterisk on it they sent them against the hitman <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. and uh and, but he put the first blemish the real blemish on that guy's yep. you know hall of fame run it, it, for his career and he's a young man come from the Olympics, you know, representing Honduras, coming from a background, I'm sure, you know, I don't know if his family's wealthy in Honduras, but they tend not to be, you know? And um, if that's the case, then that the highs of having beaten Lomachenko right. are maybe some of, of the root causes of that. Not the lung problem, but maybe the divorce, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe the questioning yourself because you didn't go into the next fight, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know well, what? Have if the papers are served and he's accepted that he's getting divorced, that is a better state of mind than I know I'm about to get divorced. <laughs> and you're trying, you know, because you're trying to put your attention to holding it together. Now, hey, if it's really truly an over focus on your training, get through this fight. Only that's going to help you at this point. And I think it's easier probably for him to get his mindset around there. So, hey, you know, listen, we're playing armchair psychologist here, folks. Yeah. No, but that's that's let's do that for another minute. Does Tiofimo have kids? Uh, you know? I believe he does have kids. I believe okay. he does have kids. So then, uh, watch how this goes. You know, how much do you make it for his next fight? A million dollars. Okay, half is gonna go to her. Who's gonna keep the kids, the car, the dogs? Right. Even if he's, he's agreed to leave, he's got to ignore all. You know, he's got to ignore all of that. None of that is as important as the next fight should be the mindset. Right. But is Whatever it? 
whatever he's going to lose, he's going to lose. But no, a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, divorce has become very personal sometimes. Right. And who knows, you know, if she's feeling vengeful and wants to take the dog because she knows it'll hurt him, yeah. you know, you need none, precisely none of that before a fight. Right. Right. So no, if video comes out of them screaming at each other from this week, I, I'm putting money on Taylor. You see yeah, what I'm he's saying? He's got her to stay at home. It's yeah. best square garden. So she shows yeah. up to the fight. You know, who knows? It, because it can be chaos. Right, right. You know, so it, something it, to look out for. And again, not, not trying to make it salacious. We're not trying to, you know... It's just these are things when you're talking about we're going to put our money someplace or suggest to our viewers to put their money someplace, we would be foolish to not take into account, uh, you know, these 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 events that happen in someone's life that truly affect their state of mind because your yeah, state of and, mind and is so important about, in the ring. How, how much can Teofimo take of the outside pressure and put it aside for the fight? You know, that everybody's right. got to do that to a certain extent. There's a, you know, that's right. We've, there's a champion from the 40s and 50s. People can look this up. Uh, named Bobo Olson. Bobo Olson. Yep. I think Carl's his first name, but he was known as Bobo. Bobo Olson. Okay. He's a middle world champion level guy. And he got caught in a Life magazine spread. And there was a, you know, it came out in public that he had a wife and kids in Chicago and a wife and kid in L.A. <laughs> Oh, I remember this now. I do I remember this guy. I was definitely <laughs> one carry into the ring, man. You know what I mean? And so he got caught eventually, obviously. You know, and, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> how much baggage do you want to carry into the ring? How That's right. You... Because he, he was fighting and doing yeah. that. So to uh -huh. a certain extent, he must have felt like, hey, I got this. You know, I. how much baggage do you want to carry in the ring? Teofimo seems to be carrying a lot of it. So now it's about mental strength. And he's right. still a young man. You know, I don't know, you know, sometimes you carry a lot of piss and vinegar. I don't know if that's helpful now. Now's the time to start getting wise. Right. So, you know, if he just settles down and boxes and does what he knows how to do, he's got a great chance in this fight. He's got a lot of power. He's got to set up his power against a guy like Taylor who's going to be very crafty. But, you know, another factor here to me that's very serious is that, you know, Teofimo could... He, you know, that first loss can affect you in many ways. And Taylor's still hanging on undefeated. So, right. like, you know, T Taylor doesn't need that portion of redemption. It's not redemption. It's keep it going. I got to stay sure. undefeated. That, sure. Taylor, Taylor's got a better version of that pressure than Teofimo does now. He mm -hmm. don't want to take a second loss. He's That's questioning right. himself if he's any good or anything like that. It just, they superficially... The baggage on Teofimo's side is, is quite heavy. It's like, you know, very heavy. It really is. It really is. So it makes it a very intriguing matchup um, coming up. Yeah. So, wow. Uh, great analysis, Miguel. Uh, the next one I just wanted to cover, too. Sonny Edwards. What up, Sonny? Versus Andres Campos. Uh, those of you that know Sonny on Twitter... He's he's a fucking delight because he doesn't give a shit. So, Sonny, you crack me up, man. You know you do. Uh, but having said that, he really is one of the best flyweights in the world. Um, you know, 19 and 0, only four knockouts. He himself will joke about his sort of lock and lack of knockout power. He's a flyweight. It doesn't matter. He's technically brilliant. The guy really is. Uh, out of England. Born in Sutton. Sutton, Surrey. Fights out of Croydon, London. Uh, I, you know, th this is a guy that, that just really is a delight to watch. Uh, probably win most, if not all, of these rounds type of deal. Uh I'd like to see him fight Bam, tell you the truth. And I think Bam was a candidate for fighter of the year last year. And um, that's a fight that I would probably call about a 50-50 fight. Um, I think Sonny's smart enough to stay out of the way of Bam and not get knocked out. And if he does, I think he can win on points. Uh, something I'd like to see. This fight, Sonny's a minus 
1800 versus Andres Campos at a plus 920. So, you know, this is not one that's got a lot of juice in it. We might throw it on a lock or something like that. But just a shout out to Sonny. Uh, I think one of the best boxers in the world currently that nobody really pays attention to type of thing. He's not a known name like some of the others. He's not as known as Bam Rodriguez and others. But at uh, any rate, there you can tell. I like Sonny Edwards, you know, my, my type of boxer. You don't, you don't got to have that knockout power. The guy just uh, believes in himself, trains hard, dedicated to the sport. He's a good ambassador to the sport. And he does some ringside stuff at a lot of the shows I've been watching recently uh, that I appreciate as well. So uh, he's not paying me, I promise you, Miguel. I just truly like Sonny Edwards, you know what I mean? <laughs> We have a big contradiction here. And I okay. agree with what, with what you said. Now, and you're, you and I are not the contradiction, and I'm not going to contradict you. <laughs> I agree with everything you said about the smaller guys. And that therein lies the contradiction. You get a lot of hardcore boxing people that we don't need for there to be big names to watch a boxing match. And we'll settle in and be like, all right, you know, the right corner is better. You know, just the analysis of the level and stuff like that. And, and, and people thrive on that. They love it, you know? And then when you get a match like Crawford and Spence, you know, the country, both sides become very robust there. And, and that's, you know, that's what boxing's all about. Yeah, and, and a lot of these people, though, that love the uh, technical aspect of the sport, ignore the lighter weight class. That's right. And to their detriment. Absolutely. And that's, that's the thing. If you really want to see technical boxing you should check out you know below you know bantam weight and below you know and this is in many ways applies to the mma side too you know john jones is john jones they people say he's the best ever there you know and that's fine but when you analyze john jones's career from beginning to end for guys in his weight classes he one of the reasons he's there obviously he wasn't hasn't been challenged much but there's also the wide range of techniques that he's used especially in his weight class he's won many different ways and handled many different types of assaults so it's considered diversified but if you look at demetrius johnson who's a 125 pound champion and you did the same analysis of the type and range of moves and ways he, you know, dispatched opponents. It is so much more sophisticated than anything Jones has ever done. Mm -hmm. For fans of the of, of the actual mm -hmm. technique of the sport, and and in boxing, I think you find the same way. So my hats off, and, and and I think again, you know, when you get a British guy that's rising above here and getting noticed on the world level. You, you know and you can count on that the guys that have, you know, that have provided the competition on the home court for them are pretty, you know, are, are good. The, the British system is because producing advanced talent, you know, across weight classes. It really is. And, and, you know, you look at the heavyweight division, you got Joyce, you got... You know, all kind, and you've got the competition that kind of came up along with them and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Every weight class, and they are Johnny you know, Fisher. Uh, oh my gosh! You, for you just triggered me though, thinking of all the British heavyweights that are that are doing their thing out there. Though, wow, yeah, and, absolutely. And one sixth of the American population. Right. So, like I said, so um, for Sonny. I, I know that when you go through the list of his opponents and who he's come up with, that you're going to have some scraps in there. And he's been putting together, um, you know, real experience. The Brits put themselves through that, you know? No, he really has. I mean, only his first couple fights were, were tune-ups, you could say, the first three. But then he immediately, by the fourth fight, uh, uh, Dodu is 12-3. and three. Uh, you know, by the sixth fight, Ross Murray, 6-0, and 19-3, oh, and three, Ryan Farag, which was for the European Superfly. And from that point on, you're fighting in world championship fights for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, 15 title fights now, this guy. 
you know, out of out of 19, um, you're talking about two, three, four, five, only five. Yeah. So four, 14 title fights, uh, something to that effect. Looks like there's a couple in there extra. So, but you know, a dozen or so. I mean, the guy's got experience. He, he's fighting the top guys in the world. You know, it really super fun to watch. Uh, and uh, and let's you know, and let's let's mention too, Andres Campos is is no joke. Uh, Fifteen and zero. You know, four knockouts for him. But fifteen and zero, and he's been fighting some some decent guys, and he's himself has fought in seven world title fights as well, and and you know undefeated, so he's won seven world title fights. Uh, Andres Campos is 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 a good opponent uh, for Sonny Edwards. Uh, I believe in Sonny. We'll uh, wait for my official pick on Thursday. I think you know what it'll be. Uh, this one is is blatantly easy to call. It's Sonny Edwards by decision. Get your money in now if you want. If the odds look good, that's where we're headed on this one. Truthfully, so let's just uh, let Hold the cat on, out I'm of the bag. A spin on this for you, <laughs> because it's a little bit unusual but noticeable that Andres Campos is from Chile, which is my country of origin kind of thing. Uh huh. Yeah. We don't get many boxers that come out onto the world level, uh, you know, from Chile. So you don't know where, which way I'm going to go on that one. Oh, that's true. We got to see what the hometown uh, hometown boy ends up picking here. I'll say, uh, you know, Sonny has fought mainly British guys. You're right. He's fought a guy from Spain, and he's fought two opponents in a row uh, from Dubai. But, uh, you know, fighting in Dubai, of course. So, uh, you've got a point there. And let's not overlook the fact that Latino fighters against Brits, in England in particular, have been on fire for two or three years now. I mean, it's it's been hard for a Brit to beat a Mexican fighter or a Latino fighter for, for a good little while here. Uh, so... I don't know what kind of curse is going on there, but you're right. Uh, this could be a great challenge for him. You know, the, the bottom line, though, is, is, you know, just to balance it off on the other end, Edwards, we talked him up a good deal, and he deserves it. Um, and he looks more to me like a guy that's going through the British system. So, you know, when he goes through, you know, they, they bring him along slowly, slowly, slowly. And, you know, you can see his first few opponents all, you know, opponents with 10 and 60 bent records kind of thing. And then you can see him make the jump into better quality competition and they bring him along. And he's carefully, you know, um, targeting a different level than, than he's currently boxing. And he'd like to break through and be a star. The fights in Dubai, you know, again, anytime in these weight classes you're getting any extra eyes and attention and payday, you can't deny these guys that because they do that's too right. much work. I think this is the fight. first one he that's I might I might be getting this wrong, but I believe this is the first one where he'll be on the zone on the main card, I believe. This, this is a step be- up for him in some fashion, I believe. Uh, if Andres Campos wants somebody to go as a translator, I am available. Hey, there you go. I'll that's right. Rica to London and I'll be there this uh, when is it? Well, we got a week, yeah, so make it happen. You got plenty of time to get there. You got plenty of time to get there. This one's at Wembley Arena, yeah. Yeah, so you'll be good. You'll be good. It's uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, I will say that Sonny Edwards just fought uh, Felix Alvarado. So, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Sheffield Arena just recently. So... And that, and he was uh, Argentina, I believe, or Nicaragua. What, okay. what is, what is Alvarado? Phoenix Alvarado, uh, Managua, Nicaragua. Yeah, Nicaragua. I, I get Argentina and Nicaragua's flags mixed up, but, uh, but at any rate, you know, he, he's fought a Latino and did all right. He made it through. So, for what so it's worth, just to, to, as you close off the second, Nicaragua and Argentina are boxing powerhouses. Yeah. Absolutely. Chile, yeah. not so much. So, uh, you know, 
for people that like the underdog, I, I present to you Andres Campos. I like it. I like it. Hey, that's it uh, on the boxing side of it. Let's get over to UFC because I know this is going to be a pretty good week. Like I said, this has been a little bit of a two-week sort of downtime. Clarissa Shields held things for us. Uh, but that was only a three-fight card on the zone starting at 9 o'clock on a Saturday here in Eastern Time. Uh, we didn't have any of the sa- early Saturday fights that we're used to or uh, multiple cards, multiple stations, and things like that that we're used to. So it was a little light, but still enjoyable. Uh, this coming weekend, I assume we're going to have some pretty good boxing, and, and it sounds like really looking at the, the UFC slate, um, some really good stuff on there, even on the undercard. But you've got two or three for us. Let's go over those, Miguel. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna stick with the main and co-main uh, of UFC 289 there in uh, Vancouver, and so they're north of the border here, and they're headlining with a women's match with all-time great Amanda Nunez, having regained her title uh, and uh, now makes her first defense against Irene Aldana, and. Uh, you know, she enters the fight a pretty heavy favorite. Fairly heavy favorite. I did see a pundit already pick against Nunez. So, uh, you know, this is more your realm, but I'm going to dig into this fight a little bit and see if there's any value that we can at least discuss as to why some folks may be picking against uh, Amanda, which is hard for me to do yeah. personally. Well, in 2021, you know, she lost her belt to Juliana Pena. Obviously, she'd already cemented her position as you know perhaps the greatest woman ever uh fighting in, in the ufc and uh you know she had a huge winning streak and stuff that all came to an end and then she won the redemption match and the redemption was a decision win she rarely goes to decisions in her bigger fights you know um and uh so she has her belt back and now we get her this fight and it's going to be interesting to see because she had such a long run it is about sustainability at this point and how much, again, how much external baggage are you going to come into, you know? Um, at this point, um, I think she's 35 years old, you know? Um, you know, family, that sort of thing. I know she has a girlfriend. Um, I was recently in Florida and, um, you know, she, for the majority of her title run, she was with the American top team. And she's no longer there. I think she regained the belt under the new coaching. Okay. So you, you would think things are okay there. But, you know, those types of changes sometimes show themselves and manifest themselves one or two fights down, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Not being with the team anymore. Um, interestingly, one of the little notes that may or may not be valuable, but I mentioned she had a girlfriend. Her girlfriend still trains at ATT. So they used to train together, and, you know, it was part of the relationship. And now that she's not there, she's doing her own thing. And, and that's the other part is she's doing her own thing. You know, so now she instead of being in a gym with everybody training at the highest level, you become the focus of it, ego and things like that. Nunez is probably more vulnerable now uh, to a new opponent that has her scouted out than she was while she was with American Top Team. I think that her leaving there is just the kind of thing we've been talking about this podcast. It's the, the, what type of baggage do you want to walk into the fight with? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. So definitely a fight to watch. That is the headliner this week, right? And then the, uh, yep. the co-headliner. The co-headliner, you got a hell of a fight and you got Charles Oliveira. Yep. The former champion taking on Benio Dariush. Alvera, you know, despite some impressive wins. I mean, right now, people talk about the top of the weight class in the lightweight division, you know, under Makachev, the champion. You know, they talk about, it, you know, Gaethje, Poirier, you know, Chandler. You got horses there, you know? What a division. What a division. Wow. Charles Alvarez beat them all, you know? And yeah. so when he lost the belt to Makachev, I... You know, I think the right thing to do would have been to give Oliveira the rematch. That hasn't happened. He's being forced to do this fight with Darius. Darius is no joke. Darius is also, you know, in many ways a little bit abused in that, you know, he has an argument that he should fight Makachev next for the belt already. He's got a, a, a lengthy winning streak of eight fights. Heading into this, that he could lose if he loses to Oliveira. 
-hmm. and then he would be back in the pack. He's being forced to do a lot of work here. Makachev also had a long streak, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oliver, it's a packed division, but this very much should decide the next fight for Makachev. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, eliminator, if you will. Yeah. So what a great night! I saw uh, just off the top of my head. I think Khalil Roundtree might be fighting as well. Um, uh, I feel like there was heck of a roster that night but it's gonna be a good day i wonder uh just from a viewer's standpoint here just just viewing notes if you will i'm seeing some ufc fights starting at 6 40 7 o'clock type of things uh there is khalil roundtree yep he's taking on chris dackhouse uh, solid matchup so those start about 6 40 then the boxing uh, let's have a look, see there real quick. So we do have, again, these are, uh, you know, in, some of them are in England, I think, too. So Saturday at 4 p.m., Ellie Scottney, Sonny Edwards fights at 5 p.m. Taylor and Lopez, not until 11 p.m. that night. So, and uh, currently stands on FanDuel. I only have those three. We will, of course, flip over to BetUS, who always gives us you know, they'll probably have 25 or 30 and we'll come up with eight for you for the lock on that. But uh, we'll give them a few days to propagate, folks. That's why we tape on Thursdays. A lot of stuff comes out on these on Thursdays. So it's always a bit of a rush to get it from, you know, get it taped on Thursday and get it to you uh, before the Saturday fight. If we could do it differently, we would. But they don't offer us method of victory or odds or even very many fights until later in the week so that's why we talk about what we can here get your brain working get get an idea of what direction we're going to go with our bets and then we'll get very detailed with you on thursday and then we'll put our prop bets on sharps after that on saturday afternoon as as things pop up last minute fun props usually so uh Wow. After after quite a bit of a downtime here Miguel we've got a decent weekend finally I uh, like it. Yeah, yep. Call friends for Saturday, and you're going to be watching fights all day. Absolutely. Time to get the barbecue fired up, folks. <laughs> hey, uh, don't forget, please subscribe, share with your friends, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, Pie at Picks on most of your platforms, whether it's Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. And uh, funnel everything here to YouTube, and we'll keep making these videos for you. Miguel, I always appreciate doing these with you. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir, thank you. And uh, yep, hit the like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll crank out more. Absolutely.